Alright, take over. There it goes. Hi! You should know who I am. I'm the big whinging cunt of an idiot who blithers aimlessly on YouTube. Otherwise known as Katana YouTube and your favorite idiot. I'm sitting here watching that. It's Star Trek Voyager. Uh, let's see, the th third episode of the first season, Time and Again. I think that's the name of it! And suddenly I remembered uh, the other fellow who talks about Star Trek, certifiably in game. That's one of the three or four that I've seen. I can't remember the others right now. I remember the, that one bit about, uh, what was it? Uh, the, not the temporal agents, that's, that's a reference. That way of wording it is a reference to Star Trek. Uh, hold on, I've got it over here. Enterprise, yeah, there it is. Which was supposed to be a prequel to the next, not the next generation, the original series. <clears throat> uh, let's see. If I can get my train of thought processing properly. Work, brain. Work. You know what? Hold on. Hold on. Just give me a moment. I don't think I'm drunk enough for this. Chase it down with some Dr. Pepper. Okay, I was talking about the episode of Star Trek Voyager. Um, technically, it's more than one episode. The Year of Hell, where the Krenum Imperium <coughs> is uh, messing with time, or as I call it, continuance, because momentum, inertia, things in motion. Continuance. Time is just a word swept over the top of all of that to oversimplify it. <clears throat> and the thumbnail of the title was asking if it was negligent on behalf of the. Well, let's just call them Time Police. And the Temporal Prime Directive. And the thought occurred to me, why no, it wasn't negligent at all. Because it went through its own little uh, loop. And went right back to the beginning. And then proceeded forward. So, why would they need to interfere with a temporal loop? Because it winds up right back where it was. Technically, this one didn't. It reset to the way it would have been had the Krenum not developed and started using the uh, continuance manipulation that they had developed. And that fellow got his wife back in the end, which was nice. So. In the flow of continuance, it went from one parallel line, looped around in a loop-de-loop, -loop, to the other. Which, in a two-dimensional Euclidean view, seems like a temporal loop, but it's actually a fifth... Technically, it can be argued as a fifth-dimensional thing, but I prefer to see it as a standard four-dimensional thing. Jumping from timeline to timeline via a temporal loop that skews off and goes into the other one. That's just three dimensions. Technically four. 
no, no, wait, not technically. In all actuality, it's four-dimensional because time is just movement and momentum and inertia. Quit it, brain. Stop trying to oversimplify simplify things. So, what I have to say is particularly irrelevant in terms of logic, but relevant only in terms of discussion and theory. Have I really said anything of value here? Perhaps not. Who knows? <laughs> it's just the innate ramblings of someone who understands multidimensional physics and how one and one, or one plus one, yeah, it's a big weird thing, equals two, three, four, five, and etc. through multidimensional math. At first it can seem complicated. But to simplify it, I am surmising and guessing, this is entirely me guessing, what the uh, time police were thinking and doing while they were watching the events unfold. They calculated the variable probabilities out towards its conclusion and determined that the temporal anomaly is essentially a loop from one continuance stream into another and it poses no harm to anyone as the crinum are not going to obliterate all life in existence in the most extreme case of things. However, this meddling, as it were, with time is an opportunity to simply observe and learn how this particular group of people, the Crenum Imperium, deal with the events at hand and the situation that they have gotten themselves into. Needless to say, I have already said, at the end, he gets back to his wife and time seems to forgive him in his own ideological train of thought, as it were. So why should we get involved when, if we interfere, it'll take him away from his wife and take him away from that happiness, and it would prevent Voyager from arriving home in this stream of continuance that we have already calculated and looked into and seen is going to happen via our own history. That train of logic seems convoluted. Tenses, when you're speaking of temporal flow, can be confusing at first. Now let me provide some context. Stream of continuance. Events A to B to C temporal loop. A, B, C. C causes A, which leads to B, which leads to C. Ad exponitum. Divergent temporal loop. I'm calling it that because it's easier to quantify because it diverges from this continual stream into another continual stream which is exactly what happened with the year of hell Voyager, the Crenum, and everyone involved you know what let me just cut the nonsense 
because this would get way too convoluted even for me to continue. Whether or not I'm sober, drunk, high off my ass, or asleep. Let me simplify it. They already knew what was going to happen, so why get involved? That simple. Elseways, no one would have that experience, and no one would be able to learn from it. Which doesn't make sense if you take into account that in the second stream of continuance that the temporal loop converged into never had the year of hell in it to begin with. But nevertheless, the year of hell still exists in a stream of time as a divergent temporal loop. through which observers in the future can go back into, observe, and learn from. I hope that makes sense. I think I've rightly confused myself. <laughs> okay, that's enough. I'm ending this video. It's gone on way too long with way too much psychobabble. Till next time!